Hello, this is Mrs. Ross, and these are Module C, Unit 2, Lesson 3 notes. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, so if you need to pause to write things down, or you can find all of this in your, um, in your book, so uh, I will need to make that larger, so hold on a minute. Okay, there we go. So, um, and let me click my draw tool and see if it'll let me draw over here. It probably won't. But, um, okay, so we're on page 104. I made it a little bit larger. The question is, two ways organisms interact. So let's see, two ways that organisms interact. Feeding interactions and relationships are uh, without organism. Okay. They eat. Is it not in this one? Let's see if it's further down. Nope, it's got to be up there. So let's see, feeding interactions and relationships are the two most, so I'm thinking that those are the two ways that feeding interactions, it won't let me highlight. So I wonder, it won't let me do anything. So feeding interactions and relationships are the most important connections between organisms. So I'm going to say feeding interactions is number one and relationships is number two. Looks good to me. Um, and then we're on page 105, so let's forward to one, 105. That's 104, as you can see, 105. Predators eat prey. Delightful. Uh, so the predator definition is here. A predator is an animal that captures and eats other animals. And then it gives you a example of a platypus that is a carnivore. Uh, it, and after carnivore, which is italicized, it gives you the definition of carnivore, which is an organism that feeds exclusively on animal flesh. Delightful. And then prey, the definition of prey. So we are right here. If you are following us on our notes, um, we've done this one and this one and this one. Uh, prey is hunted food source. A hunted food source is prey. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll this down. How do factors that limit prey affect platypuses. How do factors that limit prey affect platypuses? Down here it says, as with other carnivores, the number of platypuses in an area depends on the availability of prey. Factors that limit prey will also in turn limit platypuses. How do factors, let's see if it tells us. Oh, wait, I think I might know. I think it's over here. That's not right. How do factors that limit prey? So I would say that the, in answer to how do factors that limit prey affect platypuses, the number of platypuses in, in an area depends on the availability of prey. So the more prey, the more platypuses you're going to get. So that's box checked. Let's continue down our notes. Oops, we missed one. There's herbivores. So if we scroll down here, or if you're looking in your book, you could always do these notes with your book out on these pages. Um, there is a definition of herbivores. It says, um, unlike carnivores, some organisms get energy and nutrients from plant or algae. So herbivores are organisms that get energy and nutrients from plants or algae. So we have that. Algae, where's it? Algae are unicellular or multicellular organisms that can make their own food through photosynthesis. Definition of algae. Where do algae live? Algae live in water ecosystems check box let's go okay so this is our first quick check and it says which statement describes the difference between predators and prey prey are types of plants not really prey remain in one place probably not prey get energy from only plant material nope uh, prey are hunted for food and predators capture and eat other animals to get energy that is the answer right there okay our next quick check it says food, the food web shows. So this is the food web that's on this side. And I'm pretty sure it printed out on your printed notes, um, but it's also right there. It says the food web shows the feeding relationships among organisms in Arctic waters. Which uh, organism could be least affected by the overfishing of cod? So let's take a look at this. I cannot see that, but I am old. So let's see. There's cod. So would be least affected by the overfishing of cod. Um, Seals would be affected because the cod would be gone. Shrimp would be affected because the cod wouldn't be eating the shrimp. Baleen whales eat seals. No, no, no. No, they don't. Baleen whales are, have nothing to do with cod. I bet that's the answer. Toothed whales have. Toothed whales eat the seals. So it's going to be your baleen whales. They're actually really cool. They like filter the water. and the, Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. 
next quick check it says a student is studying interactions between organisms and food she wonders what could happen in a prairie ecosystem if foxes suddenly disappear which of these is the best answer to her question i'm looking for it uh it is going to be d if foxes disappear the population of an organism with on which foxes feed will likely grow that makes sense. Let's see. If foxes disappear, population of organisms that feeds on them will likely grow. That doesn't make any sense. Um, because if the foxes are their prey and they disappear, no. So let's keep on keeping on here. Gemma. Gemma wants to investigate a rainforest ecosystem of the Amazon jungle in South America. Gemma uses plants, reptiles, and insects native to New Jersey. What? Where she lives. Okay, to build a terrarium like the one uh, shown here. So off to the side right there. Uh, which limitation is true of Gemma's experiment? Uh, it models the ecosystem in New Jersey. Absolutely not. They don't, uh, it has everything else is native to South America. It does not model the Amazon because it, Amazon doesn't have the same insects as New Jersey. It includes insects and plants and it includes reptiles and plants. So that's going to be B. Okay, we'll keep on keeping on here. Uh, the diagram shows how a manatee gets its energy. Uh, what provides the energy for seagrass, the manatee, and most life on Earth? That's going to be the sun. Uh, what role does seagrass play? Here, let me get my paper just to make sure. I believe it's producer because seagrass is a, it photosynthesizes. Yep, 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 producer. So the seagrass is a, pr a producer. And the diagram should, the diagram that we're talking about is over here. It's right here. I'm hoping that it printed out. I think it did. Um, the diagram shows a food web. What are common traits? Oh, wait, I did something wrong. Erase, erase. Hold on. This is producer. The seagrass is a producer. I got lost in my own notes. Uh, what type of consumer is the manatee? So the manatee eats seagrass. That makes the manatee an herbivore. Okay, we got it figured out. Okay. Um, and then it says the diagram shows an example of a food web. What are common traits that help them survive? Where is the food web that is shown by the diagram? Why for not food web there? Er, knit. Oh, I think it's there. Yeah, it's down here. Why? Anyway, my life. So, okay. Wait, no, that food web goes to that. So never mind that. I'm missing a food web. Okay, lovely. It says the food web shows... Let me see if I can find this. Okay. Common traits. Okay. I'm going to have to... There is a picture, but you don't have it on this page for some reason. I thought I put it there. And I thought wrong. So it says, what, what are common traits of prey? Okay, so common traits of prey in the picture that you will see, especially on the quiz, mice and rabbits, they are the prey. They have quick reaction time, large ears comparatively, and then muscular hind legs. and an alert nature. And then what might happen if the rabbit population suddenly shrank due to disease? So when one organism is removed, the populations that feed on it decrease. Um, Period. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, so page 108. Let's see what page we're on right now. We're on page 105. We need to get to 108. So that's 106, 107. I believe this is 108. So it says, how does a change in population in the feeding relationship affect 
How does a change in population in a feeding relationship affect the other population? For example, an increase in prey would ha cause what to happen to predators. Is this 108? Come on. It is 108. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. It says right here, very last sentence, if one population in a feeding relationship increases or decreases, the other is affected. So if we, we know that if there is an increase or decrease, we know that there is going to be an effect. Okay? So let's continue. Quick check. Every five years, certain kind of oak trees experience masting in which they produce and drop hundreds of acorns. How can masting affect organisms such as black bear, deer, and squirrels that feed on them? And the answer here is that the population of oak trees, black bear, deer, and squirrels will all show a slight increase during this masting period. Okay. And our next quick check. Grizzly bears diets consist of roots, tubers, berries, nuts, fungi, insects, rodents, and fish. What ecological role best describes the grizzly bears? Uh, they're not producers because they don't photosynthesize. Uh, they do eat some fish or some meat, some rodents, and they do eat some berries. So they're going to be omnivores. This food web shows how parts of a meadow system interact with parts of a marsh system. Which of these carnivore, which of these is a carnivore according to the food web? Hold up a minute. Oh, I didn't even list it for you. So there's grasshopper, a mouse, I must have been interrupted or something, rabbit, or fish. And the carnivore, according to this, is going to be the mouse. That's really interesting. Okay, so let's keep on keeping on. We're going to go to 109. So if this is 108, we need to go to one page. This is going to be 109. Okay, so the definition of symbiosis, symbiosis, let's see if we can find it. There we go, right there, it's highlighted, refers to the close and long-term relationship between two species in an ecosystem. So you would write that there. And then we continue to scroll three types of symbiotic relationships. That's going to be down here at the very bottom where it says the three types of, oh, too far, too far, too far, too, why so difficult in life? Okay, right there. Um, three types of symbiotic relationships. They are based on whether organisms benefit, are harmed, or are unaffected. So we have to go to the next page. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, go back. So here, for some reason, I tried to make it difficult. How are symbiotic relationships categorized? They are categorized based on whether each organism benefits, is harmed, or is unaffected in the relationship. So that's this one. Okay, and I'm going to go down a little bit. And if we're going to list the uh, different types, it's going to be mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. That's going to go here. Mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So let's go back up for the mutualism definition. And I'm probably going to have to make a part two. But uh, mutualism occurs when both organisms benefit from an interaction. That's what you would put here. One example of mutualism. Let's see. For example, zebra and wildebeest each feed on wild grasses of the savanna. Yet they migrate together in large numbers across the Serengeti Plains and Kenya each year. By doing so, they deter predators such as lions and cheetahs. So zebra and wildebeest um, are in a mutualism kind of relationship. Okay, let's continue. I don't know why it goes up like that. Probably my fault. Um, let's talk about commensalism. Actually, before we get to commensalism, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and make a part two. So you'll have to go to part two. See you there.